future. As a director of a neonatal intensive care unit some 25 years ago, we explored the lower limits of what was a viable human being. We too often lost the battle against mortality, and even though the child had been only on this planet for a very short time, I would offer the parents a lock of hair, an identification bracelet, and any small memento to recognize the impact on their lives. At times, a lock of hair would not be accepted, so I'd put her away in a drawer, knowing that months later, they we all return to Earth, some sooner than others. In our show through the year, we've introduced Scott, a life-filled man who now carries someone else's lungs in his chest. The strangest sight in my recollection is seeing a chest wall open, completely devoid of all heart and lungs, things that we think of as key to existence, and then seeing a living, now breathing human being emerge. As we explore our issues through this show, what we're looking for is what can we learn about our own immortality? What can we learn from those whose lives must be lived more quickly? You are going to see that the future is now. On our show tonight, our co-hosts, Robert and Peter, live every day with cough assist, a machine to vacuum mucus out of their lungs, vest, high-frequency chest wall oscillation, non-impulse oximetry, home, sleep and awake studies with VivoMetrics life shirts, by assist ventilators, all in all watched over by machines of loving grace, and humans too. Join us as we explore the aesthetic and emotional impact of the human body of the future, available now. You're about to see a very brave young man. We have sacrificed uh, a generation to this war in Iraq. Uh, I've been back to the National Institute of Health where we've tried to look for something resembling a war dividend, something that we can get out of this conflict. And, and unfortunately, what we're seeing is going to help our amputees. The problem with all that is just the sacrifice of the young men. I'm happy for our children and uh, adults who are going to benefit from this, but what great sacrifice. I remember the song, Mrs. McGrath, uh, and in that song, uh, Mrs. McGrath is very, very uh, engaged by a British officer who's going to take her, her son off and put him in a uniform. And when her son comes back, uh, he comes back without his legs. They've been blown off by a cannonball. What happened to your sea legs? Mrs. McGrath asks of her son, my, my handsome boy. And strangely enough, for Heath, who you're about to meet, the letter C and legs go together. His computer legs are what have replaced, what have been blown away by our new cannonball. Keith, good to meet you. I'm Heath, Dr. Chris Landon. Heath, tell me, we were talking a little bit about your family and uh, kind of your life sure seems to be filled with, uh, with sports. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I have a, I have a wife and three kids at home. Get out and stay busy in sports. I, you know, I try to get on, I'm trying to get on the United States to stay with ski team. You understand you've served your country. Uh, absolutely, yes, sir. And so are you retired now? I'm retired out of the military, uh, which, which allows me to uh, take part I think you're naming them off. You're golf. I golf. Yeah, I, I swim. Uh, I run. I was in the Endeavor Games earlier this year. Ran a uh, year in the winter sprint. Uh, I'm swimming in a triathlon this year. I actually cycled across the country a couple years ago. Yeah. 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 You said something about the disabled ski team. Tell, tell me a little bit more, more about that. Uh, well, the disabled ski team, uh, it, as soon as the Olympics closed down uh, over four years, the uh, Paralympics kick off. Uh, and the disabled ski team participates in the Paralympics. Uh, and so that's what I'm, what I'm trying to get in. I ski out of mono ski. I'd still be doing all the same ski events, but it would be uh, in the Paralympics instead of the Olympics. But uh, I think we know a little bit. I, I think they're going to take a, a little look at what seems not disabled about you in any way whatsoever. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about about your legs? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I'm wearing two Autobox legs. They're a computer-controlled hydraulic 
uh, knee microprocessor knee. Um, the, there's sensors down by the foot in the pylon that update the computer processor 50 times a second as to what's going on, where my weight is, and where the foot is in time and space, so that it knows what to do, how to open and close the hydraulic valve, so it's the best uh, suit in my needs for my bear. That's a little more complicated than that Nike iPod. Uh, Absolutely. Thing. So, uh, are there special types of legs in for, for each event? Uh, these are my everyday walking legs. Um, the only real restriction that I have with these legs is that I can't get them wet. Um, so, I, obviously, I don't swim with them since I can't get them wet. Um, I can jog a little bit on them. Kids from touching the uh, stove when they're running for it. But uh, for the most part, I, I have a specialized set of legs that I run on. Um, and I have a set that I use when I'm cycling. Um, but other than that, these are my everyday legs. It's what I wear 98% of the time. Okay. Well, I think right behind you, you have, you have some of those do, specialized yeah. legs. So. I actually have one of my, uh, my running legs. It's a, it's a single axis knee um, with very little resistance. Um, it's got a flexion setting. Which, uh, it has a, uh, an extension setting and a flexion setting, and that's about it. So it's really good for running. Um, and when I have a carbon fiber sprint foot on here, uh, set up so that when I'm on it, I sit about like that with no heel. Uh, it's energy storing, energy returning. So as, it, as I run on it, it compresses from, uh, from the toe to uh, my other hand here. And it compress, and then as I come off, I'm all that energy is uh, released and uh, propels me on no matter what. And so this is this is what the, the running runs on. Do you have other legs back there too? No, that's all I brought with me. Uh, the the bottom ski is... I wish I had that one here to show you. Um, it's, um, the monoski is kind of a mix between a ski and a snowmobile. I have a snowmobile shock and a seat, and um, then the ski underneath it, a ski on wind ski. And I use two uh, kind of like crutches, uh, Canadian crutches or loft string crutches with uh, a little ski tip on the end of them. Uh, I use that and I can ski you know, black diamonds, I can ski moguls, I can ski all of that. And we race on the same, same types of things that they do in the Olympics. And as everybody skiers, race skiers. This whole man machine interface, I, I think it take quite a while for evolution to uh, take our silly proteins. And, uh, how, how, how fast did these things evolve? Do you help you uh, consult for the company? Uh, you know, I love that about Autobot. That, that they do ask for feedback from from the uh, the patients that are wearing their products. What, what we do like about them, what we don't like about them, what we would like to see in them, um, and they take that and listen. And I'm, and I'm sure that they're developing and, and researching ways to, to make uh, their great product even even better. I think just evolution uh, will take quite a while. We don't we're not quite up to silicon and diamond the world. Gone through an evolution or two in terms of giving you new ones or set updates you're sending. Um, the Suag has been out now for about, uh, it's just coming up on TV. Uh, when, it, when it first came out, it absolutely it revolutionized everything. And, and I still think it's the best thing out there and that people are still, other companies are still trying to, uh, to come out with, with their version of the Suag that is comparable. And yes, because it is computerized, they can plug in, uh, they can update my settings, they can change my settings. But uh, uh, this is actually the second generation. Uh, they added a few new features in on it from the last set, so it's my second set of CD. Uh, so I guess I have came through and uh, like I say, they, they update the settings and change all that as much as they can. Is that a Fantastic to me. Yeah. It absolutely does. Uh, version 2.1. You and uh, I'm happy that's been able to extend extend man uh, one more time. Thank you so much. Thank you.